Good morning and welcome to how to maintain your WordPress website. A bit of a general overview of how to do that. My name's Dante St. James. We'll be taking you through today's particular webinar. Just bear in mind, this will be uh, recorded and used on the YouTube channel of Business Station. So if you do miss anything or you want to check it again, it will be available there for you. Um, thank you to Anita, Dean, Jeanette, John, Narita, Karen, um shay and susie all for joining us online this morning and no doubt there'll be some more people joining us very shortly too just going to quickly check my microphone and make sure it's the right one coming through let's change that over the better one that's better and um the, the zoom webinar chat is open this morning so please feel free to use the q a to drop in some questions if you've got them along the way or if you'd like to put in something in the zoom webinar chat it is open up on my right hand screen so i can see that coming on so if my eyes are sort of averting up this way it's because i'm looking at what i'm presenting if i'm looking up that way it's because i'm reading your chats and reading your messages so please do put them through we're going to do this in a bit of a um a bit of a format today we're going to start off with a little bit of PowerPoint stuff. We're going to go over the ideas of maintaining your site. And then the second part, we're going to go in and actually go live in the back of a couple of web, WordPress sites and do a bit of maintenance and do a bit of um, updating and stuff like that. So we'll get underway. This is brought to you by Business Station and the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions Program, which is administered by the Regional Development Australia office in Brisbane for Queensland and in Treaty Business Consulting in the Northern Territory. And of course, Business Station in Western Australia. You can find out more about the ASBAS program and become part of our one-to-ones as well uh, through that particular address at the bottom of the screen that you'll see. And this will also be available on YouTube on Business Station's channel. So just make sure you check out all the different things we've been putting on there over the last few months. Since about May, there's uh, dozens and dozens of free tutorials you can follow along there. A quote from Troy Hunt, who's a security expert in Australia, um, very much known for their Have I Been Pwned site, which basically means um, you can check to see if your email address has been somehow added into a hacker's list. It says WordPress loves to boast that it's one of the most popular web builders, but they're not so boastful about being the world's most hacked web builder. That's because they're the most, they're the biggest. When you're the biggest, you tend to have a lot of um, attention put on you. And that means attention of the bad kind and just not the good as well. But that is okay. We're going to look at how to sort of offset some of that this morning by looking at the different kinds of WordPresses to see which one you might have. We're going to look at what you should be considering if you're looking to get a new website on WordPress, what you need to think about before you do it. We're going to look at updating the plugins and themes on your WordPress website and what to do when updating isn't possible. Maybe a web developer said, don't do it, don't do it. We'll see what you can do to sort of offset some of the security problems when you can't do an update yourself. And then finally, we're going to take a live look under the hood in a WordPress website and do a little bit of maintenance and checking about in there. First of all, who I am is Dante St. James. I am a Facebook lead trainer, digital marketing associate and media planning professional. I've got a few other badges there that I couldn't quite fit on the screen. I do some work during the day with Treaty Business Consulting in Darwin in the Northern Territory, but I also do training for the Skull International Group, which is a uh, group of tourism and travel professionals uh, that I'm currently doing a national training campaign with. Also a registered trainer with Google's Digital Springboard Program. So I do a lot of training across WA, Northern Territory, Queensland, and and South Australia. I'm also uh, doing a bunch of training with the Territory Proud organization in the Northern Territory. I'm part of the Be Connected network uh, across uh, the Australian government's um, uh, way of helping to give digital literacy to those older members of our community and also working with the Australian Def Industry and Defence Network, not just in the NT but across Australia as well. Enough about me though, let's get on with the rest of this. So there are two very different kinds of WordPress. Now you may have one or the other. WordPress.com and WordPress.org. Now, while they're kind of similar, they're not exactly the same. They do have a few differences. For example, the WordPress.org version, it does need to be downloaded and installed on your own web hosting. So for instance, you've got to go and buy web hosting before you can have WordPress running on that hosting for you. It also comes ready to install on most web hosting services. So we're talking about things like SiteGround, um, Ventra IP, um, pretty much all the DreamHost, HostGator, Bluehost, 
um, even you know the, the terrible hosts like GoDaddy, Net Registry, and um, Crazy Domains all do have versions of WordPress that you can automatically have installed on your web hosting with them. So you, it's very rare that you'll get web hosting where you have to go and download it from somewhere else and bring it onto your hosting. Most web hosts will include it in there. Um, the downside to WordPress.org version is that you are responsible for all the updates and all the security which means that you're going to be the one who um, is ultimately going to be called upon to keep the thing running and keep the thing moving. WordPress.com though is a slightly different version. It's, it's like the, the safe version for beginners. It includes the web hosting and can include your domain name as well, all in one neat package. You do that just through WordPress.com. They have a free level, which doesn't include a domain name and has very limited features with it, but it does start at about $5 per month um, to get you started, including that web hosting and the domain name as well. Um, you can, probably one of the great advantages here of the WordPress.com version is that it can automatically update itself. So it never has to update the WordPress software and most of the plugins and the themes that work with it are also going to be updated automatically by the system itself. So it has got a, a few advantages to it when it comes to the maintenance of everything, but it does have fewer themes and fewer plugins that will work with it than you got with say the .org version. In fact, the main page builder and theme that I use, which is called Divi, does not work with this version of WordPress at all. So you may have to do a bit of a, a cost benefit analysis of which one of these versions is gonna work best for you. And I really do suggest that you get um, a, an, an ASBAS Digital Solutions one-to-one -one appointment um, with, well, it's, there's several of us. Um, I, I will soon be back on the list as well, but there's many others who are able to I just, totally forgot about the names of the others who can help you out with this to help you work out which one may be the best one for you to go forward with. Continuing on. Before you get a new website, so if you're looking at getting a brand new website made, this is something you do need to be aware of with WordPress. A few little things I'd say to think of if you think you're gonna be capable of maintaining your website, have you got a background of being able to run these updates and things yourself? Or is this something which you go, Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't quite sit that perfect with me. It's not something I'm really that comfortable doing. It also ask it, are you willing to learn how to maintain your website? So if you don't know how to do it now, are you willing and able to learn more about it to make sure that you can? So I just have to sit up a little bit higher because um, just now quietly, I'm on a bit of medication at the moment and it makes me not breathe correctly and makes me yawn in the middle of a presentation. So I do apologize if I do that. I'll try very hard not to, but I just need to sit up a lot higher to do it. It'll also um, ask yourself, will you be able to, will you actually have the access to be able to do this maintenance of your website? A lot of web designers, when they start putting this together for you, they will set up in such a way that they don't want you doing the maintenance. They don't want you doing the updates. They don't I just don't want you touching anything that they think could be quite dangerous or quite complicated because they think that you may not be capable of doing that. Now that might also be because they've made some changes in the website that have, that have, that have like in the design, in the theme, or even perhaps by adjusting some of the code in some of the, um, in some of the plugins that may break if you do an update without their permission. So they might often say that. So it's just a matter of saying, look, will you actually have access to be able to maintain the website yourself when it comes to securities and updates? Or whether this is something which you go, oh, actually, this is something we'd rather you didn't do. Think also too, that if you don't have the access and you think it's really important and it is to get the updates done, then how much will each of those updates cost you? Does your web host include backups so they do them for you? Or do you have to do them yourself? Or is there a plugin within your website that's going to do those backups for you? And is there anything on your site that you know or suspect might break if you run those updates? And that might be something you need to run by your website designer to find out whether there is something that they're built in there that may break those updates. I would also ask this major question before you go into a WordPress site that is WordPress actually the right platform for you? It's not necessarily the right platform for everyone. Yes, it may be the most popular. Yes, it may be the most flexible. Does not mean it's necessarily right for you. For some people going using a system like Wix where they can build something themselves or 
Squarespace. Squarespace is actually really good as well because it's giving you the option to design your own thing, take templates and put it all together. And Weebly does very much the same thing. They are in some cases cheaper than using WordPress and have a lot of features, but they don't have this you know, hundreds of thousands of different plugins and things to choose from. They just have maybe dozens. So it actually makes it easier to choose things. And of course, if you're building a really basic website, you can actually do that with Canva. Canva will allow you to post what you make of, of web pages on their system to web servers so that you can actually host um, a website built in Canva. Now, bear in mind, that's not a great way of doing a website. It's certainly not flexible. It's certainly not going to be, you know, SEO friendly or anything like that. But then there's also an option, say Google sites, which is a free way of building white websites. The only thing you need to pay for is your domain name. The hosting is free. The web builder is free, but it is very, very limited. So there's a lot for you to think about in terms of where the WordPress is actually going to be the right platform for you to get started on in the first place. If you think you can't really handle or you don't really want to take the time to learn what the back end does, then it might not be the best one for you to start with. So now we move on to the real nitty gritty of updating your WordPress. And that's doing the plugins, the WordPress core and the themes as well. So why you need to update is because when you when the WordPress core files update, so that's actual the actual WordPress thing that itself is um, there's new functions and security updates that could come through that um, are very vital for running it in a secure way and not allowing hackers to get into the core of the code. Um, yeah, as well as yawns I warned you about, I'm not breathing properly. Stop leaning over Dante. Um, web hosts may force updates upon you as well. So depending on who you're with, it could be site ground particularly, they will force WordPress updates upon you whether you like it or not. So if you've got a web um, developer who wants to say, don't do updates, that's gonna be a problem. I just had a message from Anita saying, I thought the Google sites have been closed down. No, they haven't been. They're still very much available. I um, actually created half of a one yesterday. So they're still there. You just go sites.google.com and you'll be able to do it through there. Or you can also do it to through um, the Google My Business has an interface to it as well. So you can build a website through your Google My Business profile too. Your plugins need to be updated because that's the number one way in which people will get into your um, into your uh, into your, um, what am I saying? Into your website, into your code. The unupdated plugins, which go very, very deep into the functionality of website are a very vulnerable place for people to be able to get into uh, where there is no protection in place. So updating the plugins to the latest version not only gives you a lot of protection, but it also helps them to run properly when new versions of WordPress come through. Often when there's new ways of WordPress doing things, old plugins don't cope with that new way of doing it. So they stop working altogether or they may just run really, really slowly and slow your whole site down. And a slow site is really bad for retention of people on your website, but also really bad for your search engine optimization, your rank and your position on Google. And themes need to be done because they need to run faster and lighter and they may even stop working altogether when a new update from WordPress comes through or your web host updates something like their version of PHP or CSS. And those things don't mean anything to you. It's okay. They're the things like the building blocks. They're the foundations of your website that WordPress is laid over on top of. So think of it as the house is built upon your web hosting, which is the slab of concrete. There's a framework called PHP, which is the frame around the house. CSS is the design element. So it could be painting the walls. That will stop working if the entire, um, you know, the, the foundation is removed from your house altogether. So if this seems really scary to you, it's okay. A lot of this stuff can happen really quite easily in the back end. We'll show you how to do that in a sec. But I'll answer this question, which is something I get quite often actually, is how soon you should be running those updates after they're released. The WordPress core updates I would recommend to do on your website within 24 hours. The theme updates, I would be checking with your website designer first, but if they haven't done anything sort of tricky in the back end, um, that's not in say a child theme, if you don't know what that is, don't worry, it's not too hard uh, to understand that you may need to uh, check with your web designer first. But if you don't check with your web designer and you put go ahead with it and it works okay, that's fine. I'd still go sort of within that 24 to 48 hours when it comes to themes. 
plugin updates, even though they are the most um, the most vulnerable, they're also the smallest in terms of you know they, they will update things all the time with very very minor minimal changes that aren't always security related. So with those, update those within a week. But ultimately, what I try to do is when I get updates come through, and I've got an interface for over 400 websites that we manage that lets me go click once and it updates all the versions of that plugin um, across all those websites all at the one time. And this, the same with the themes as well. So if you go can't do this, when updating is not possible because you've got somebody saying like a web developer, a web designer saying, look, we can't do that. Well, good web hosting is going to help you a long way because quite often web hosts will put firewalls in front of the traffic that's coming into your website and it will block all the known malicious traffic and any sort of suspicious traffic that it feels like maybe causing a problem down the line. Good firewalls within your WordPress site are also vital. We'll take a look at a few of those because they actually stop file changes from happening altogether. So it means that when you've got a change coming through from any of these wild west kind of um, bots and pieces of malware, the site says, uh, 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 you don't have permission to do this. Only the person themselves has permission. It'll stop that from being activated. Services like Cloudflare do block bad traffic at the source. And we found that when we put Cloudflare in front of a network of sites that I used to work with, it reduced the amount of um, bad traffic by 80%. And it also helped us to stop going over the top of our allowance every month because 80% of our traffic was actually bots. There was some reason that bots really were, a traffic to, were, were attracted to our network of websites. So that can really help you by stopping things at the source. You can even put challenges and blocks in front of particular countries. If you find that you're always getting trouble with traffic coming out of say Russia or Ukraine um, or Iran or any of those nations like North Korea that we know are sources for a lot of bad actors and bad traffic. And finally, to update whatever use you can. So let's look at good website hosting. I've listed a few really good website hosts here. SiteGround is one of the best in the world. They used to host out of, um, the closest place to us was Singapore. Now they actually host using Google's cloud service and they've got a, a website, uh, sorry, a web, a, well, let's say a data center actually in Sydney now. So we've got so much closer to us and it's really super fast and has increased. They have tons and tons of their own protective services built in. They run um, backups of your data every single night. So if something goes wrong today, you go back to yesterday's backup and it's done literally within minutes. It's a great service. Fast Comet does the same. Digital Pacific does the same. Ventra IP does the same. And DreamHost does the same. The beauty of all these services is that they doing the backups for you and having a tool within their control panel or their C panel, as is often called, will be able to restore your website back really, really quickly without having to use third-party products or plugins within WordPress itself, like Backup Buddy or something like that. Having that ability means, oh, wow, you're able to just get straight onto it. And if you don't know what you're doing, the SiteGrounds and Digital Pacifics and the Ventra IPs have call centers. They actually have people who are ready to take your call to assist you in returning. In fact, they will not even charge you to, to do the backup restoration for you. So it's really, really important to have a decent web host. Jeanette just asked, how easy is it to change hosting services? Um, I probably need to look at what your hosting service is first to see if there's someone who does a lot of that, but it's not particularly difficult for someone like me to do a change of web hosting services. You may find it's a little difficult for you to do it, that said, SiteGround, Venture IP, Digital Pacific, and I believe Fast Comment all will offer you a free um, transfer of your website from your existing service over to their services. So I can't speak for DreamHost, but I have a feeling they probably do the same too. So just knowing that will make it a lot easier to transfer you over. They can actually do the transfer for you and manage that for you at no additional cost. Um, but they may ask you to pay for a, maybe a year or at least three months of hosting up front. So now they've actually invested their time wisely for you. It is really important to have good web hosting. Um, bad web hosting would be things like crazy domains, net registry, um, Melbourne IT, funnily enough, has terrible web hosting and also GoDaddy. 
They're very, very good at domains. They're very, very good at managing your email through Office 365, but they are very bad at hosting domain names. And I call out crazy domains all the time on this because they do not update their PHP version often enough. And they have a lot of very old software running, which gets quite often broken with newer versions of WordPress. You'll find that your website just suddenly stops working. But above that, they are very slow web hosting services. They oversubscribe websites onto their services and it just makes those services really, really slow. It's one of these things where you get what you pay for in web hosting. And it's really important with WordPress because it's a very, very chunky system and it's very, very bloated with a lot of extra stuff on it, but it can tend to run a little bit slower than we'd like it to. So you want to try and get the most amount of power you can where you can, and that often is with your web hosting good firewalls within your website are also vital. Now, most of these web hosts will have a firewall in front of your site anyway, but it's always helpful to have a firewall within your website because it stops certain actions from bad guys and bots and malware from ever being able to activate. Whilst they might be able to get into your site and embed themselves into your site, they won't be able to actually activate, which is what you want. So WordFence is probably the world's most popular one. Um, I use one called WPMU dev um, which is a an all over system that sort of connects all my websites together and lets me manage them all at once but it also helps me to uh, it's got certain things to it it's got like a form builder that's built into that subscription software it's got a um, like an seo tool that's very much like yoast um, it's also got a defender which is um, used as word fence to block those bad things from happening in your site or from being actually saved in your server in the first place. Another one, good one is all in one WP security and firewall. Somehow the names of these aren't the most memorable. I know their marketing is probably not the best, but WordFence is probably the one that most people will know. And quite often it's the one which will automatically be installed by a lot of the web hosts and their automatic installation processes of WordPress as well. A service called Cloudflare, which I use on every single site that we use because it number one speeds them up. Number two, it adds an extra bit of um, what we call compression to the site, which helps the site be a lot lighter and be uh, generally rank better in Google for that matter. And also it puts a firewall in front of the traffic coming to your website. So the bad traffic, and this is where I was talking about that 80% of that traffic um, being blocked from ever getting to our sites, um, all that bad traffic, it never gets to you. It knows what all the bad traffic domains are. It knows where that bad traffic's coming from. It recognizes very cleverly that most of your traffic comes from Australia. So when it sees an outlier come from Kazakhstan and you know it, it, it will question that and put a challenge in front of that traffic, to make sure that you know it's it's legitimate traffic that it's a legitimate person it's almost like that are you human thing you often see it can be really really difficult to use with some web hosts we've had some trouble using it in the past with fast comet and we've had some trouble using it with domains that are booked through godaddy often there's some stuff which godaddy does which um, makes it a little bit difficult to use it in front of. Um, and Anita just said that too. You've had problems using Cloudflare and GoDaddy and gave up in the end. Quite often what we need to do is GoDaddy, Crazy Domains, um, those kind of hosts, and, and Fast Comet is another example of that, where they will hold settings to do with your domain name for a little bit too long. Um, it's a thing called Time to Live, and it's usually two hours. Some of them will go 365 days, and it means that Cloudflare never really kicks in. So what you probably would want to do is if you're going to use Cloudflare, you'd use it at the very beginning and you attach your domain name to it at the very beginning before you build your website. It will be a lot easier, but it can also help if you've got um, a situation with this and you want to run Cloudflare, then you may need to get someone from the ASBAS Digital Solutions program to give you a bit of a hand um, to sort out where the problem is and what changes you may need to make with your web host provider excuse me, your web hosting provider or with your domain provider as well, depending on where the little issue or the conflict seems to live. And then when all else fails, just update the bits that you can update. If you cannot update your theme, you cannot update your plugins for fear of breaking something, then at least update WordPress. If you can't even update WordPress, then put something like Cloudflare in front of your site. It's going to cause so many 
are those potential issues to never actually happen. We've got some sites which were built in a very specific way by a third party provider in the past, which we've never been able to update in say two or three years, nothing is updatable, but we've been able to protect those sites by putting Cloudflare in front of it and having a plugin like WordFence to stop there for any of that bad traffic, activating anything that may be lying latent in any of the vulnerabilities on that site. When you put a word fence inside that or a firewall in front of your website or Cloudflare, it's going to overcome some of those problems that would normally be absolutely horrific um, if you couldn't update with. But that said, you really want to do all the updates if you can. So the administering of WordPress site, we're going to take a look at that under the hood very, very shortly. In fact, let's take a look under it now. I'm just going to uh, minimize that and go into the back of a website here. Here we go. You should be able to see the back of one of my websites here. This is for one of my businesses called Clickstarter. I don't actually own it anymore, but I do help administer it. So what we're seeing is straight up, you see we've got the WordFence plugin there. And that WordFence plugin is telling me it's already blocked some stuff from Ireland and Romania that were behaving badly. So that's really interesting to know that said, okay, I found some issues there with your stuff. So what's going on? We can see that there's a problem. Um, we can also see, you know, things such as I've got certain plugins that tell me, you know, how many visitors have been to that site in any sort of day. So, um, so far today, we've had 92 visits. It's been a good day for us. We've got some really good results coming through. Um, but also, all these sort of blocks here are quite configurable. They'll tell, they're things that you can change and update. One thing I'm noticing straight away, though, as I look in this site is that redirections database needs to be updated. That's a click to update. Now, I know that that's a very safe thing to update because what it is, it's redirecting old website um, pages that are listed in Google to their new locations. That's definitely something I want to update. So I'm going to click to update that one. Now, quite often, these little ones like that, that something needs to be updated are very safe to go with. Um, so it's telling me I need to upgrade the database, which is fine. I can do that. This is a very, very contained thing. So if you ever get something like this, it's due to your redirections. That's a particular plugin that I use to manage the redirection of traffic from old pages that don't exist to new pages that do. And there you go. I've got certain pages that I've set up that go in certain directions now, and it's now up to date. So that will work better than it did before. Now, what I also noticed over on the left-hand side was there was an update here that needs to be run. So if I go to update, so dashboard and then updates, it's going to bring me up a list of all the things on my site that do need to be updated. So even though I've run that redirections one, now I'm going to see some of the other stuff that needs to be updated. It's telling me, thankfully, that I do have the most uh, recent version of WordPress. Uh, my word, this is this one is hosted on uh, SiteGround. So this particular site is um, partially managed. So they will automatically update the WordPress version within 24 hours of that coming through. So I've actually allowed that to happen within my web hosting control panel to say that, yes, please do those updates automatically. I also have the plugins connected through a thing called Jetpack. Now Jetpack is like a, a monitoring piece of software that's free. It's made by WordPress that will actually allow us to be able to see what the things are that need to be updated in plugins and run them across multiple pages. I'm going to show you that very shortly about what that looks like when you've got lots and lots of um, websites that you're managing. And then it's showing me down here that I need to update my theme. Now I know that I've not done anything in this theme that's um, dodgy or custom that's going to break this particular update. But quite often what you'll see is that if you've got um, you know, your, your themes running, that quite often your web developer will set up what they call a child theme. So there's things that would break if I update this Divi here. Um, they will not break if I'm running what is called child theme. Now, if you don't know what a child theme, it's like a, it's like a, a protective block in front of the theme file. So the theme files never change, but you go, hey, before you go to get the theme files, check to see if there's something I've wanted to update in this child theme first. And then it goes, okay, you've got that. I'll display the version that the child theme says, but for all the core stuff, I'll use the main files. I know this is done to sound really techy. I'm really sorry about that. Um, there's not really an easy way to explain it, except for the fact that, you know, it's the child theme should be where all the, the customization happens. Now, if your web developer has done all the customizations in the main theme files, you may have a problem. If you were to run this update, for instance, it may actually cause a problem. So I've selected my Divi, I'm going to update it. And it's now going to run that update now. 
it's going to go from 456 to 466. So it's only a very short update. We don't really let our updates go very, very long at all. And once it runs that theme, what I may want to do is go and check this one out. And he just said, figuring out the child theme systems confused you for years. Yeah, it took me a while to get my head around it as well. Um, but thankfully, there's lots of really good tutorials online that help you to do that. But it's more to say, um, a lot of the child theme stuff happens when you're trying to replace a particular element that's in your theme with something else. Um, I don't use standard themes anymore. I use page builders, things like Beaver Builder, Oxygen Builder, Divi Builder, Elementor, um, because you don't need to do changes within the theme to make visual changes on your site. They're all done through the page builder itself. That's pretty much the way that WordPress is largely going now. now it's telling me that this has now gone on. It's now happened. What it did though, when it did the update, notice how it says enabling maintenance mode. So what it does, it makes your website unavailable for a moment while it does the update. And then it will take that off again, that disabling the maintenance mode because everything's now up to date. So if I now go to the front end of that website, I should see that there's no problems with it. Let's see what it does. So I'm not seeing any major problems pop up with anything that's um, bad. No, it looks good. Looks like it's working just fine. So I'm really happy with that update. Um, as I look down the left-hand side, sorry, I'm sort of looking away from the screen, but that's where my screen is. Um, as I look down the left-hand side, I can start to see there's lots of things I can check. And I've got a little thing in there called Jetpack. Now, if I go to Jetpack, Jetpack is what connects me through to the, a lot of the functions of WordPress.com. So remember I was talking about the two different WordPresses? Well, WordPress.com is is, has a lot of, ver, vis, uh, has a lot of um, automatic update stuff that you can run. Now, in here, it's not going to tell me a lot about what I'm doing, except that I've put a downtime monitor on here. So what this does, it sends me an email to tell me if my site goes down. I've got an image accelerator in here. So what this is doing is helping to add um, any of those sort of, if I've got right, lots of big images on my site and I'm a bit worried about the fact that they might be slowing me down, it actually takes a version that smushes it down and makes it a much faster version of that image and hosts it on WordPress's network of, of servers all around the world so that no matter where you're accessing that site from, you get a much faster version of it. So even if you were hosting your website in America, um, you're not getting the fastest result out of it. It's going to have a version of your website and a version of your photos that's actually hosted here in Australia. So it's going to be a lot faster for you to be able to do that. It's called caching um, or mirroring. Um, having your site mirrored closer to where people are going to be means people get the fastest version of your site um, when they can. It's also telling me they've actually got a protection in place. Now, I don't pay for Jetpack. It's absolutely free. They've already blocked 176 total malicious attacks. That's outside of Cloudflare, which I also got on there, and WordFence, which I've also got in there. So there's tons of things going on in the background that I would never know that it's already doing. So it's blocked in malicious traffic. It's increased the, the speed of my images loading. And it's also connected me through to wordpress.com. So I can go through a desktop app on my Mac or on Windows 10 or on my mobile phone and access an administrative interface for my website from there as well. It also gives you a, a, another level of support. I've only got the free plan. Say so Jetpack free. Um, but if I wanted to handle more of my security through them, I could do that by setting up always on security, which means I wouldn't need WordFence to run this at all because they'd run it for me. It's a really good all-in-one system. It's sort of taking over the world, WordPress world right now. Um, but the cost of Jetpack, if you want to go a little bit more, so let's, let's say an upgrade and see what it says, is now starting from... So your security, so you're looking at $29 a month billed yearly. It's at least in Australian dollars. But you look at that and go, if I've got a site which is um, very vulnerable, this is where you would go, yeah, this is definitely worth it. Not the, not the cheapest thing to do, but it is an option that's available to you. Now you'll notice too, I've popped out of my WordPress into wordpress.com. So which is, this is the interface of wordpress.com, which is where I can manage lots of my sites. So I can switch my site up here and I can see that I've got tons of sites listed here and I can now administer all these sites all at once. So if I want to sort of, let me go to my sites. If I wanted to update the plugins across all of my sites all at once, now I know all the sites that we manage um, have all been set up in a way that I can do this without breaking stuff. Jetpack lets me do this. So if you've got more than one site, it's worthwhile having Jetpack just if for nothing else, for being able to manage your updates from one place 
all at one time. So what I do every day, I go in here, I haven't done it today. I go into manage, uh, sorry, my tools and plugins. And it will show me if I go to manage my plugins, it'll tell me what are the plugins that have updates available to them. So you see all that populating. So this is just in one day. I updated everything yesterday. And now just today, I've got even more plugins. So it's telling me there's 18 plugins need updating. And there's you know, 50 sites here of my sites need this one updated. So I've hit that now. That's going to go away. And it's going to update every one of those sites with every one of those plugins all in one go. So if you've got two websites, that can be really, really, and this, yes, Jeanette is on the free version. So you don't need to be on a paid version of this. I'm not on a paid version at all. So this is really handy. If you've got lots of websites that you need to run and you need to run manage, this will make it so much easier for you to run your updates. That said, this is only updating your plugins, not your themes, not WordPress itself. All that needs to be managed separately. And I've got a different set of um, a different product that I use for that, which I won't go into today because number one, it's actually quite expensive. And number two, it's uh, a little bit complicated to set up as well. So while that's doing all that, I can go back to my website into the back of this particular one. And we can have a look at some of the other things we're going to look at. Now, WordFence, you remember, is one of those things I looked at for security. So let's look at WordFence down the left-hand side here. It's going to bring up a dashboard specifically for WordFence, which is going to give me options for managing the security settings of my website once it actually gets on there. So since I've been in there, they've changed their, their, their terms of service, which I'm going to agree to. What it's saying that it's um, scanned 60% of my site, 48% uh, of known and emerging threats have been blocked from it. Um, and it's sound that it's actually found some issues in the most recent scan. So I can check in here on WordFence and go, well, what has it found? Let's see what those issues are. So what are we running in the problem? So it's just running through the scan now. So it's telling me that the plugin really simple CSV importer appears to be abandoned. It's telling me that nobody's updated this since 2015. So what is probably a really good idea for me is to get rid of that plugin. That's a really good example of how a security plugin can really help you out. And this is the free version of WordFence as well. I'm not paying for WordFence. So number one thing I need to do is go, okay, let's see what it needs to do. I can manage my plugins to get rid of it. So I might've used this thing once before, just once, but I've never used it since. So it's telling me, yeah, you probably need to get rid of this. So let's look really simple CSV importer. Let's deactivate it because I don't need it. And once it's deactivated, I can then uninstall it. Now I can safely do this one because I know that this is something I did use a long time ago and I didn't do the right thing by removing it straight away, but I should have removed it straight away as well. So let's go back to it. Really simple CSV importer here. Let's delete. And that will no longer be an issue. Once it's deleted, I'm going to go back into my word fence, go back into my issues. Once it comes up, a little bit slow today. And then I can mark that as now fixed because I've now removed that from there. It'll pick that up in the next scan anyway. But what I'll do now is just go, okay, the results found actually, it's already picked up that I changed it. There we go, this one. So I go this one and I'm going to mark it as fixed. So it takes it off the list. And it's going to now also check to see whether I have, come on, mark is fixed, you can do it. Well, it's telling me there's a few paths were skipped. So there's some places on my website that have been skipped due to scan settings being set to skip those areas. So I can look at that and see what are those areas. So they're areas that are like these particular areas. Those are parts of my website that I don't actually use anymore. So that's telling me there's something in my web hosting I probably need to remove. The dot, this forward slash cal, forward slash dev, forward slash dev one and forward slash support, none of which are parts of the website that are used anymore and haven't been used for about a year, can actually be removed now from my web hosting. So I could go into my web hosting interface, my file manager and get rid of those. Um, so it's telling me a lot of things that are really, really good for me to be able to do on an ongoing basis as general maintenance, looking under the hood, changing the oil and water, that kind of thing, making sure I'm keeping things nice and relevant and up to date. 
Another little thing you might want to do when you're sort of popping in to see what kind of administrative tasks would work for you is to pop in. So I've got, um, let's just say my plugins. I can look at my whole list of plugins and see what I've got in there that I don't use. That's just sitting in there. It's, it's being sort of taking up space that I don't really need. Now in this case, I've got a thing called Beehive Pro, which is sitting in, it's sitting as non-activated. So it's saying you can activate it or you can delete it. I don't use it. So it doesn't have any reason to be on this website. So I can delete that one. But what I might do though, I might go through and look at all the ones that are set up not to be as not active at the moment and get rid of them because I'm not using them. They're not actually used on the site so they can be removed safely. So in this case, I've got um, Beehive. Let's say Defender Pro I'm not using because I'm using WordFence, so I can get rid of that one. Who else is in there? <clears throat> WordPress Importer, I don't use that, that can go. And the reason why I would get rid of these, they're number one, taking up space on my web hosting, but secondly, if they're not updated and they're not looked at, they then become an extra vector for attackers to come in and use vulnerabilities in the code of that particular plugin. Even though I do update those plugins when they're not used, it's still worthwhile me getting rid of them because there's no downside to getting rid of them. So now I've selected a few of them. I do a bulk option and I go delete. I want to get rid of them and apply. It checks. Do you really want to do this? Yes, I do. So I'm now removing those. So I, once they've gone, they've been deleted. I've now got less files sitting on my website, which means less of my allowance on the web server being taken up. And it's also less places where attackers can come in if I forget to update every few days. Now, a lot of these cases you see on the right-hand side, automatic updates. This is a feature of Jetpack. Jetpack allows you to set automatic updates for certain things. There is no downside to this. Um, I would say this one is a very common plugin. Akismet is an anti-spam on comments stuff. Um, it's already got auto updates, but Brander Pro, yeah, I can enable automatic updates for that. Uh, for Forminator, I can enable automatic updates there. Official Facebook Pixel, definitely enable automatic updates there if I can. So gone down a bit further, we've got uh, the WP1 Pager, which, yep, I can enable automatic updates there as well. So that way, those should never actually come up as ever requiring an update because they'll automatically happen when the developer of those plugins comes in with an update that's going to run. So I don't have to worry about those ones anymore. They shouldn't even come in in my update browser here. Now I can see there's some things that didn't quite run. You've got the Yoast browser, 21 sites that didn't update. So I'm just going to run that again. And what it will do as I'm running all these over here in Jetpack, um, and most of you are not going to have lots of sites like I do in Jetpack. Um, it's just because I happen to manage about 400 of the things that they have. I have tons of them in there. But in this particular case, um, you see that Yoast just disappeared. That was one that came up with an update pr probably during the time that I was actually actively working in this particular demonstration. So pop in there, we've got our backup, but I've got all sorts of things running now. I do not use backup buddy. Now I can go confidently. I don't use it. What I actually use is, um, SiteGround's own web hosting backup that it does. So this is a particular one I can go, I can think aloud and go, I don't use it. I don't need to have it in there. It's taking up space, deactivate it and delete it. Same with this brand of pro. I don't use it. I can deactivate it and then delete it. So anything I find in there, which I go, you know, these are things that don't necessarily have to be in there. They can be deactivated and then removed. So as you see, it's taking a little bit of a while to get that going. Now it's done it. So I can see backup buddy now lets me delete it. And same with Brander Pro. I'll do that same thing. Delete, apply. Yes, I do want to do that. And now it's going to delete those for me. So once they're deleted, again, less space taken up in your server and less potential places where people could come in and hack your site through unupdated code. So now they're gone. What else do we want to look at? Well, I can start to look at things like, for instance, Yoast, if that was something I was using. So Yoast is um, not on this particular site. I'm using a thing called Smart Crawl. But I can look at any of the, the general settings I want to look at. Um, they're all probably set in stone. There's not really a lot in there you're going to change. Your tools, there's not really much in there you're going to change either. But I might want to go and look at my dashboard again to see what's running up there that may need looking at. 
it'll bring up any sort of things, um, any sort of indications of issues I may or may not have. So I might want to look through, say, if I've got Jetpack installed, I've got this little uh, site health status. So it's telling me my site health is looking good, but there's some things that I can do to improve my performance and security. This is a great little thing that Jetpack will actually install into the um, into the um, dashboard of your website. And just for instance, too, if I want to look, I can move things around on my dashboard, make it up higher, because that's something I'm likely to look at a lot more often than the other stuff there, including this one here, too. So the stats, the at a glance, I want to open that and have a look at it. So it's telling me where people are going on my site and what the traffic each day has tended to be. So we've done very little work in this site, but we're still getting around about 100 a day of people coming into the site. So that's feeling pretty good. Um, it's good to know those things. And it's good to know what people are actually seeing. So this top post here of how to target Facebook groups is telling me how, what things I've got on my site that people are actually seeing. So in the last week, that's had 42 views. Some reason that particular article has really hit home with people. Those of you who are in, um, in, in the Northern Territory in my October Business Month session last week on writing for SEO um, would know that this looks familiar. How to target Facebook groups. How do I respond to influencers who want to who want to get free stuff from me? It's very much the, um, the, the format that I was looking at. This tells me that that's actually working for me, which is fantastic. The word fence one, as we saw, is telling me that I've got a problem with people coming in from Romania and Ireland. So what that might tell me is that even though those IPs have been blocked, I have zero reason for Romania to be accessing my website. So part of that is that I could go to Cloudflare and tell it to block all traffic from Romania. But for now, word fence seems to be doing a good job of it. If I'm starting to look at my analytics, if I want to look at analytics, this will tell me roughly how people are visiting my site. So in the last 90 days, how many visits I had for the full site, what my top posts are. So it's matching there. It's saying over the last 90 days, I had 354. So I'm starting to get information. Now these panels on here in particular are going to be very much about your, um, about, sorry, a lot more than that, 4,139 over the last three months. These sort of panels are part of what you can use. This is a Google Analytics um, panel, which is plugged directly into my Google Analytics and tells me stuff that I can put, I can keep it here just for easy reference. The only reason I have that. Now I've got a couple of different ones in here that are telling me a couple of different bits of information. This one I've got showing me the last seven days. This one I've got showing me a configurable time between you know, the last 30 days, the last seven days, whatever. I can still see the top posts I'm doing, which allows me to know what's working on my site and what's not working so well on my site. What I'm noticing is some of my blog entries are really starting to hit well. They're answering questions that people have, but the sales pages on my site, say for instance, in website design, WordPress site design, they're not working so great, but my social media training page is doing a little bit better. So I look at my top pages and posts. I can see a question, how should I be using my hashtags? A question, how do I respond to influence and collaboration requests? How to target Facebook groups? These are all really well-performing pages, particularly that Facebook group ones that really hit a real, um, a real nerve with somebody. So what I would wanna do is make sure that, okay, that's telling me that the questions and answers are doing well. I can use that information now to go and produce more pages like that. So it'd be really, really useful for me to also update the information in that page to make sure it's still up to date and relevant. So that's not an administration task so much, but it's just a really clever way of getting information out of your site that will help you to understand more about how people are using your site. So you might do that through Google Analytics, but Google Analytics is a lot of overkill and a lot of information if you just want to know what are the pages that are doing best and what are the pages that aren't doing so well. Over on the left-hand side, remembering that if you want to check where your updates are, you click on updates underneath dashboard and that will tell you what needs updating and what doesn't need updating. So if you go there and nothing's showing, then your stuff's up to date. If you go there and see things that do need to be updated, remember to, number one, remember that your web designer might have done something which makes updates not great. So you might want to check with them first to make sure it's safe to update stuff on your site and then go ahead and update it. Um, Jetpack is prompting me to run backups before I do any of these kind of things. Now, if you're using a good web host, you won't need that because they have backups for you already. So you can restore that quite easily. 
But um, in the case of Jetpack, it allows you to make mini backups as you're doing things. So if you're updating things as you're going, it will also give you a version that uh, of Jetpack that will hold a mini backup so that when you change something, it's got like a, what it calls a, um, a change point. It's got a point where it goes, this is where a change happens. So quick runner backup and you change something here again, quick runner backup. So if you make those changes along the way, it can revert back to them and restore, they're called restore points. And you can restore that back to the way it was supposed to be in the first place. So in the case of that, I don't use it because I'm quite confident because I built this site in the first place and what I'm doing. But in your case, if someone built the site for you, you may just have to check with your web designer or just experiment a little bit, knowing that you may break something, but hopefully your web host is going to have the kind of um, ability for you to be able to restore what the website was at least yesterday. And in some cases, um, if you've got really good web hosting, they might update a couple of times a day. So you're getting this morning's update rather than last night's update. Now that's really about it when it comes to administering your website to keep it safe, to keep it running well, and to keep it nice and clean. Um, has anybody got any questions that are very specific about WordPress itself and how to, um, I guess, do some administration on their site without it being too out of control for them? So I've got on um, the, the webinar chat is open. The Q&A is also open. So please ask some questions if you'd like to. I'll be glad to answer those for you. Um, we've had questions so far about GoDaddy and Cloudflare being a problem. We've had questions about um, are these certain things available in the free version? Just as a note, that um, backup through Jetpack is not available through the free version. You will have to pay for that version in order to get backups working through the Jetpack system. That's one thing you will have to pay for. Um, WordFence is free, um, but WPMU, which I use for a lot of my other sites, is not free. Had a question with Jeanette saying, how do you add plugins? Yeah, great question. So if you go to your plugins on the left-hand side, oh, wait a minute, I'll share my screen again. So I go to the left-hand side of my screen and you see the plugins. You want to go add new and that allows you to do one of two things. You can search for the update that you're looking for in a list. So when it comes up, you'll see it in a second. So it's got some of the most common ones that are in there. So if I'm looking for, let's just say Yoast, I can search for Yoast and it will bring me up Yoast. Any second now. Come on, buddy, you can do it. There you go, Yoast, and I can install it from here. Or otherwise, if it's a plugin that I've downloaded, um, you can bring that one down and it can go, okay, install plugins and you can add a new one by uploading it. So upload up here, upload plugin, and you can upload the file from there. Uh, Susie just said that Clickstarter actually designed your website about a year ago. Do I have to run updates? Are they auto done by you guys? See, Backup show, Buddy shows me 58 edits since last backup. Do I need to back up? So Backup Buddy may not need to do that for you because your web hosting hopefully is doing it for you. I'm not sure who your web hosting is there, Susie. Um, but if it's SiteGround, you're safe. Um, but yes, we uh, so Clickstarter does run these for you. It's one of their services they automatically do. So A2 Hosting does actually do backups, so daily backups. So you're safe in that one. Um, in the case of um, the updates, yeah, that should be done as well. So yeah, thanks for the prompt on that, Susie. They should be run. It should be included in this great big list of uh, websites that are managed through here in this great big interface. So if I went to the sites, all my sites, your site would show in there as well. Anita's just asking, currently I have a problem with my Installatron instance of WordPress on a certain host. Is there any way of changing hosts while the problem is still unresolved? Um, it depends on what the problem is you're talking about, Anita. Um, if the problem's with Installatron or whether the problem's actually with WordPress, um, you should be able to uncouple your WordPress and send it across to another provider, regardless of what the issue with Installatron is. Um, Installatron, for those uh, playing along at home, is an automated um, installation of lots of different pieces of software, including WordPress, that's included with a lot of web hosting. So they put it into their control panel or cPanel that allows you to install things like WordPress, Joomla, um, in some cases, Weebly, different kinds of website builders and different kinds of software that can run in a web hosting environment. You should be able to change host and transfer that regardless of Installatron because we can use things like Backup Buddy or um, another one called Shipper, which will allow us to pick up your website and take it somewhere else regardless of what your web hosting currently is. 
Um, Jeanette is asking, am I using Canva to do themes? No, not really. I, I don't do Canva to build sites or themes. Um, I do Canva to do everything else though, but not websites at the moment. You can do it and you can build themes in Canva in a certain way. But honestly, I wouldn't be doing that. What I would be doing is using um, page builders like Divi, Elementor, Beaver Builder, Oxygen Builder, all those kind of things that allow you to build pages in blocks rather than doing it over in Canva. You just go, okay, do your mock-up in Canva and then you go over to something like Divi and then you do a, a live version of that in something like Divi. Or you can use quite often the themes or the layouts as they call them in those builders that automatically do a lot of really attractive, very common looking um, layouts for websites. Um, Susie said, I have a lot of problems with spam emails. Jack's been working on lost to why it's happening. Can you address what we can do to reduce spam? From spam emails, uh, um, use Gmail, basically. I use Gmail for all that. And, and that's primarily because it handles most of the spam for me. So if I'm using um, what's called, it's called Workspaces now, but it used to be called G Suite, which is the paid version of it. Um, that handles just about all of it, but you can use even the free Gmail for your email and run your, um, your particular um, domain name through that. So through your, say if I've got Dante St. James at gmail.com, I can have me at Dante St. James.com also running that in there as well. Selena's asking me now is what is the difference between wordpress.com and wordpress.org? We kind of covered that one really, really early on, but what it is is that wordpress.com is already got the hosting for you. Um, it's all the, it's the hosting, it's the domain name and it's WordPress all in one paid for product. So you're actually paying for it and it's a monthly charge. They often will charge you a year in advance with. WordPress.org is a version that you are responsible for all the updates. You're responsible to find your own web hosting and it's often found as installable in the web hosting you buy. So if you get say Venture IP, it's probably the best in Australia, you get them, they give you a control panel to control your website stuff from, including making emails and all that sort of thing. But it also then allows you to install WordPress by just clicking a button and saying, I want to install WordPress and put it here. Um, it's a little bit harder to work with. It's a little bit more complicated to work with, but it is ultimately more controllable than wordpress.com, which has a lot of limitations built in. If you're not confident with all this sort of administrative stuff and security stuff, wordpress.com is probably gonna be the better version for you. Most plugins and most themes are available in it, but a lot of those page builders like Divi are not available in it. So you may have to find a theme you like working with and experiment a bit until you're happy with what you're actually doing. Um, from Anise is also saying, what's the best way to manage email in WordPress? We don't really manage word, email in WordPress as such. Email sits separately. So you can use your domain to say send Web, website traffic to your WordPress site, but you use your domain saying to send email traffic to something like Office 365 or Gmail or um, another service. The web hosts include often email as part of their package. So what it will do is give you a separate way to set up an email, to have a username, a password, server information that you put into something like Outlook on your computer or Mac, um, Apple Mail, or you know, your iPhone mail or your Android mail system that's on your, on your phones and then you run that all yourself. Um, it's not reliable, that kind of way of doing it. It's not great quality email. It's gonna go down, it's gonna get filled up. It's gonna have, the problem is that when you're managing these sort of things yourself, you may think you're saving money, but ultimately you're not. You're better off paying eight, eight bucks a month to Google for them to manage your email and it'll be done flawlessly and never go down and always be backed up and you know all your emails are safe for the eternity of the planet. So I really think that you use um, different horses for different courses, just the same way that it doesn't make sense for you to have your own video upload service on your website, you're better off using YouTube. It doesn't make sense to have your own email within your web server when someone like Google or Microsoft do it so much better and it's really not expensive to run at all. And Dean's asking, what are the main plugins you recommend? Jetpack, Cloudflare, WordFence, any others? Um, to be honest, if you're looking to work for one sort of set of stuff to use all the time, I would say that it's probably best of using a thing called WPMU Dev. I'm gonna type that into the chat window, WPMU Dev. Now that, if you look that up, is, is, a, is, a, is a bit of a, a, 
a suite of software. What it will do, it does the same as WordFence with a thing called Defender. It does the same as Gravity Forms with a thing called Forminator. It does the same thing as Yoast in the thing called um, uh, uh, Smart Crawler. And it'll do the same thing as some of those, um, you know, in my site where I was showing that I've got um, on the dashboard, let's show it here, my Google Analytics panel that was showing, you know, the traffic that's gone through. It's got a thing called Beehive, which does that as well. Now you pay one subscription for a year. It's not expensive. I can't remember exactly how much it is, but that subscription covers so much of your stuff. So I think every site should have Jetpack on it because it makes sense to be able to get those notifications to speed things up. Cloudflare um, isn't 100% necessary unless you're running a really, really busy, very, very highly visited site. It could be very useful for that. Um, WordFence, it only use it if you're not using WPMU as your overall suite to be able to protect and enhance your site. Um, and I'd say then, depending upon the, the stuff you want to do, it's going to very, very depend on the, the, the stuff you want to do in terms of um, using like a calendar. Do you want to take bookings, all that sort of thing? There's going to be lots of different plugins to use for those different kinds of, of functions that you want to fulfill. So thank you. Very good question, Dean. There's um, so many options you can run. Um, for instance, I use an event calendar in one of my other sites, which I'll bring up, um, which then runs um, things like our workshop bookings. So if I go in here and to this one, the modern events calendar, I find that to be a really, really useful free thing that runs all of our, um, all of our uh, events that we want to take bookings for. And it's very easy to use and very simple. And then we can look at, um, I've got other things like uh, this redirects pro thing. So I'm not really going to use that much because that's not something that we want to really see that much of, but we're running like, there's tons of other things we run in there, depending on what the, the kind of um, functions we want to run in our sites. Well, we've actually run out of time. So thank you so much. It's been a great one for questions. Um, if you want to go deeper into the world of WordPress, um, you're absolutely encouraged to go and try and use things like the ASBAS Digital Solutions uh, program where you can get subsidized help one-to-one -one on these kind of things. There's several people who are really, really good at the whole WordPress thing. Or you can drop me a line. Um, obviously I wouldn't say by me because I can be a little bit expensive sometimes, but I'm actually coming back onto the ASBAS Digital Solutions program as an advisor myself in the next two weeks. So if you'd like to get me to help you out with stuff, if you feel like I'm, I'm the kind of guy you want to see smiling down your Zoom channel, well, I'm more than happy to help you out as well through ASBAS. So um, you can check that out at businessstation.com. Thank you so much, guys. I really hope you've learned something today. And if you've got any feedback, please send it through to me at that address, Dante at treaty.com.au. So thank you and have a fantastic Tuesday. And I hope you win at the Melbourne Cup too.